I'm up here on the Santalina Peaks with Rebecca Cairnswick. We're uh, looking around at some of the endemic plants of Santalina. We're also enjoying the view out here. It is absolutely stunning. We're, we're up on top of the Atlantic right now. I'm looking out over a desert, a cloud forest, fields and fields of useless flax now that we've got nylon to make ropes, and some of the cutest little houses you've ever seen. It is, it's stunning up here. Okay, it gets really confusing when I, I talk about many of the endemic species here because they all have common names that many people will relate to in other parts of the world, um, but they're actually species that are not closely related. We have here a gumwood, which is uh, not a eucalypt. We have a redwood that's not a, uh, a redwood. Uh, we have cabbage trees that are certainly not cabbages. They're ancient relics from a distant time and they're endemic to St. Helena and found nowhere else in the world. In 1995 when work started on uh, creating the national park there was a census of how many trees that were left on the island and there was there were only about well there were less than a thousand there were just over just 800 of these trees left on the peaks so when I say they're mo the most common they're still incredibly rare although common for, for the endemic trees so we have the black cabbage tree which as you see behind us, we'll hopefully see the he cabbage tree, the whitewood and the dogwood later on, which make up that group of cabbage trees. Um, and we'll see them, they, they flower in sequence. So what they do is those little black cabbage seedlings or uh, dogwoods or whitewoods will germinate in the bark of the tree fern. Thing. And then they will both grow together. And eventually the cabbage tree will get too heavy. They will both collapse onto the forest floor and then they will both carry on growing. So quite often you see these wonderful thick entwined, entwined trunks of these cabbage trees and the tree ferns growing growing together. So now, now we're beside the St. Helena redwood, uh, not related to, to the American redwood in, in any way, shape or form. It's uh, an endemic genus to St. Helena and the family Trachetiopsis. Um, and it once formed uh, the major canopy tree on the island in the, the sort of moist gumwood forest at about 700 metres above sea level. It was, it, it's now extinct in the wild, or was extinct in the wild. It's the last tree in the wild died in the 1960s. And what we're standing in now is, is a field gene bank. It's basically a group of, of trees that have been um, brought up to provide seed for, for future restoration work to reintroduce it back into the wild. Um, I first started working on the redwoods in 1993 and uh, at that time there were just seven trees that were, were flowering and reproducing and I carried out a series of, of cross-pollinations, basically running around the island from one tree to the other carrying pollen and, and putting it onto the receptive stigma, the female part of, of a tree that I wanted to then start to produce seed. And, and I've basically been doing that from, from one generation to the next, uh, rather like selective tree breeding, trying to, to, to select for fitness, to see whether we can actually recover these trees uh, to something of their former stance, something that they once resembled. They got eaten. We've got a, a, an introduced little weevil, rather like a rose weevil, which um, merrily munches through leaves and, and uh, fruit as it gets through. So. All we're left is pretty coloured cotton and no seed, which, which is really quite sad. You know, that's, that's hundreds of uh, new seed that we could have had and could have collected right now and could have given rise to, to new trees, but um, they're being demolished by, by this introduced weevil at the moment, so we're going to have to find some way of controlling that. It, it became rare very, very early on. Uh, it, it was, was a, the most important timber species to early settlers. So the island was settled in 1659. By 1724, the governor of the island was already proclaiming it as, as rare. I don't think the story's ended yet for the redwood. I mean, I'd, I'd love to think that for, for, for a tree that once was so strong and tall and majestic that we, we, we can bring it back again. But maybe we can't it's 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 as i say it's one of many species on the island that was reduced to such small numbers its sister species the ebony down to two the, the, uh, some of the gumwoods the bastard gumwood down to a single tree now extinct in the wild false gumwood down to eight um you, you're talking extreme rarity in, in on saint helena
Okay. okay. I've got a smile on my face now because we've got some good news. We've got some she cabbage seed. And the she cabbage is uh, one of the trees that was also part of the former uh, moist gumwood woodland, of which the redwood would have been a component. Uh, and just like the redwood, it, it became almost extinct on the island. It's now only found in one place in the wild, and there's about five trees there. Uh, I mean, the trees here, there's, there's a couple of hundred trees here, and, and this is a couple of generations on from one single tree. They've all been derived from a single tree that grew in the wild, which has now died. Um, and, and it is, it's all about trying to find out whether we can pull these extremely rare species back from the brink of extinction and create opportunities for them to be reproducing naturally. Like we said in our trip on the way up here, considering the ecological damage that's been done to this place, and our Earth is really just a small island out here in space, I, I fear for the ecological damage that we're continuing to do to our planet.